Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another devlog of the currently unnamed first person shooter thing I've been working on for the past few weeks. Now in the last devlog titled starting out on creating my dream game, after the fact that this game is slowly starting to become a fever dream, I implemented most of the framework and basic game mechanics and stuff. So that meant that this week, now that the boring stuff is out of the way, I could start working on more interesting things. And boy do we have some interesting things. So in today's mess of a devlog we're going to be going over a lot of very juicy new additions to the game. We've got new enemies, new weapons, new mechanics, and so many new bugs. I mean features. Intentional features that I added intentionally on purpose, of course. Let's just get to it. Let's start off strong and talk about the big one first, the one you're all here to see. The new enemies. Now if you've seen my previous video, then you know that my game already has an enemy, unless you weren't paying attention or something, in which case that's understandable. I wouldn't want to listen to me drone on about inverse kinematics for 10 minutes either. Anyways, this enemy was a physics space 4 leg crab thing that was procedurally animated through code, complete with breakable limbs. And it was pretty cool, it did what it was supposed to do, and only completely broke the game 2 or 3 times. However, fighting the same guy over and over again began getting stale, and it was also pretty lame. So I decided to rework most of the old enemy code, and also add a couple new enemies. But I think we should talk about the changes to the old enemy code first, since it'll provide a lot of context for the new enemies. So yeah, the original enemies are a whole lot better now. They're still the same old crab guys they were before, but with a couple critical changes to the code. First off, the walking is a lot better now since I fixed a small bug where the walking would be really jerky, so now they take slightly larger, slower steps, which I think looks a bit better. Also before, the enemy would move really robotically because the rotation and velocity were extremely restricted in order to improve pathfinding, and I really didn't like that so I spent some time tweaking things and now they're floppy, which is pretty epic. But I still wasn't satisfied. The enemies were floppy, sure, but there was still something missing. And then I realized, ragdolls. You see, before, when you hit the enemy, they would lose a bit of health and maybe lose a limb if you had a limb. And when they lose all their health, they would just abruptly explode. Now I actually really don't like the exploding part, as it potentially punishes the player for killing enemies and is also just really annoying. However, I added it because it was the easiest way to handle enemies dying. I mean, all you have to do is add a particle effect and delete the enemy and it looks pretty good. So basically, I took the easy way out. So this week I fixed that and now when they die, they ragdoll. The limbs will still break off if you break them, but if you destroy the main body, any remaining limbs will now flop, and all the glowing things will stop glowing to show that it's dead. Then it'll disappear after a few seconds so the map isn't flooded with corpses. And I actually really like this. Admittedly, it doesn't look super good on the crab guys since they're pretty wide and don't flop all that well, but with some of the new floppier enemies, it's pretty epic. So let's talk about what new enemies I've actually added. And boy oh boy do I have some enemies. The first one I made was pretty standard. It was pretty much the same as the crab guy but smaller and with two legs. It also walks kind of funny and is quite floppy which is just adorable. Then I did a quick 180 and added this absolute chad who is decidedly not so adorable. He's a kind of humanoid big boy with big hands and an even bigger heart, and also a detachable head. Now this enemy is quite different from the previous enemies as instead of having a gun it has debilitating hand cancer, which is quite tragic and he will be in my thoughts and prayers in the coming days. But on the bright side, it allows him to smack things. Hard. And as per usual, all his limbs are destructible and he flops over when he dies and all that good stuff. I also made his head pop off when he falls over, which is just incredible. And finally, I decided to add this guy who is probably my favorite by far. As you can tell, he's basically just a bomb fused to a pair of legs. What's not to love? He's handsome, he's funny, and he's an absolute blast at parties. In fact, he's one of the most outgoing guys I know. He'll just walk up to you and before you know it, you'll be having the time of your life. Although said life might be shortened considerably. Speaking of shortening lives, guns. Yep, I added more. And honestly, I have no idea how this happened. It started off with me remodeling the original revolver from the last video, you know, spicing it up and adding some much needed touches of color, when I thought, hmm, Blender is already open and I'm working on a gun already. Why don't I just go ahead and make another one? And one thing led to another and I somehow spent 20 hours making and animating not one, but two entire guns. Like, I'm not even exaggerating, you wouldn't believe how much pain I went through animating these, but I'll get to that soon. First, let's talk about the changes I've made to the original revolver gun thing. So in the last episode, it was looking like something straight out of a certain movie from the 1980s. You know, a nice black brick with some stylish LED strips taped on, which is admittedly kinda tacky. So I added a couple more LED strips in an attempt to make it a bit more exciting, and now the gun looks really smug, which is just amazing. Then I started work on modeling the new weapons. So let's start off with the first one I made, the rifle. Yeah, it's a pretty standard rifle. I basically made it by tracing a reference image of a rifle which I found by googling some questionable search terms, some of which probably put me on a watch list or two. 
but I'm sure it was worth it. Anyways, after I had the basic shape down, I spent some time ironing out the edges, and by that I mean literally ironing out the edges, and added a few finishing touches. And it looks pretty decent, albeit a little boring. So for the next gun I decided to try something different and made this futuristic shotgun scene. I once again modeled it after some random gun on Google, this time under the search term futuristic shotgun. Then I did the usual and added the LED strips. And by this point I was feeling pretty satisfied with my models, so it was now time for the next step. Animating. Or really the next 10 to 15 steps because my god this took ages. And that's because not only did I have to create 3 entire sets of animations, I also had to do it in a way that enabled weapon switching, and then implement the whole weapon switching system into Unity from scratch which was a bit of a mess to say the least. But hey, at least it's done. It may have taken 3 entire days, but it's in the game now and it's all smooth sailing from here. Or at least that's what I tell myself before realizing I'm gonna have to do it all over again every time I want to add another weapon, god f But now that we've gone over the process of making these weapons, let's talk about how they actually work. Basically, you click to shoot. Yeah, it's the same as any first person shooter. You can shoot, reload, switch weapons, and all that. But let's go over the weapons one by one anyways, because they all have some key differences. I already covered the revolver in the last devlog, so I probably don't need to go over it again. Also, with the revolver, it doesn't need much explanation. The next gun I added, the rifle, is pretty similar to the revolver, except it's full auto, shoots faster, and does a little less damage. However, the shotgun is a different story. Now this weapon functions quite differently than the other guns in the game, since well, it's a shotgun. It works like a typical video game shotgun and even has a multi-stage reload thing, where our mysterious bodiless protagonist puts in one shell at a time and you can stop it at any time, which is pretty cool and only took me approximately 12 years to implement. And also, instead of shooting one bullet, it shoots multiple, and instead of shooting slow bullets, it shoots very fast hit scan bullets. There's also quite a bit of spread and the damage decreases at longer distances, so it's definitely a close range weapon. Which is pretty cool because my game now basically has a weapon for every purpose. I'll definitely be adding more weapons like rocket launchers and all that good stuff, but for now, each weapon fills a certain need. The rifle is for long range, the shotgun is for close range, and the pistol is for being useless like all video game pistols. Except for maybe that one at the end of Titanfall 2. That one's kinda nuts. And yeah, those are the main additions to my game so far. However, I also made a ton of smaller, boringer additions, but you probably don't care about them all that much so I'll make it quick and give you the abridged version. So as you know, I made a lot of changes to the old crab enemies. Some minor ones include small tweaks to the AI so that it tries to crawl towards the player even when it has legs missing instead of just sitting there. I also buffed the enemies a little by increasing the speed of their bullets, because they were way too easy to dodge before. However, they were still far too weak for the god tier apex gamer that I am, so I also gave each enemy limit's own health counter as they used to get destroyed in one hit, which was kind of OP. So now you have to do a certain amount of damage to break them, which can vary depending on the type of enemy and stuff. However, this got pretty confusing since it became quite hard to tell how much health the enemies actually had due to how every part of the enemy now had a different amount of health, and there were three different weapons that did different amounts of damage, so I made the red glow on the individual enemy parts start to flicker when they're on low health, with the intensity of the flicker varying depending on how much health it actually has left. This is really nice as it lets the player know which parts are weaker so they can plan an attack accordingly, and also just looks pretty cool. But I still thought this was a little lacking, so I also added these hit markers that flash when you hit enemies, which is pretty standard in most first person shooters. The color of the hit marker also changes between white and red depending on whether or not the enemy or limb you hit was destroyed or just damaged. Pretty standard stuff. It doesn't exactly look great, but this was a last second addition so I'll make it look good later. But speaking of looking good, the explosions are still not looking very good, but at least they're actually round now. Yeah, before the explosions were made up of squares. In fact, now that I think of it, every particle effect was actually made up of squares. And that wasn't a stylistic choice or anything, the square was actually just a default shape and I was too lazy to draw a circle. But this week I decided to get a free trial of Adobe Illustrator so I could actually draw shapes properly and yeah, explosions are around. However, while the explosions are looking nicer now, I've noticed that the performance isn't the best and having tons of explosions go off all the time kinda tanks the frame rate. And as we all know, a life without explosions constantly going off isn't a life worth living at all. So to fix that, I implemented object pooling, which is a way to reuse a group of objects, or a pool if you will, instead of creating and destroying a new object every time you need it, which is slow. This is mainly used for things like bullets and particle effects, and improved the performance quite a bit, since there were a lot of bullets and particle effects constantly being created and destroyed, which is pretty neat. Speaking of neat, this map is pretty neat. Well actually it's pretty messy, but you get the point. Anyways, this week I started thinking about level design, so I made a short platforming section and an arena with endless enemies as a bit of level design practice. 
You may also have noticed that I've changed the textures and materials a bit, and that was just to make it a little less bland. Although all of the textures and levels currently in the game are just placeholders and will be replaced later on anyway, which I think I actually forgot to mention in the last devlog. But for now it looks a bit better. Then I reworked some of the player movement code and gave the player a bit more momentum, which made air movement a tad more realistic. I also nerfed the wall running a bit and decreased how high the player was able to wall run, because it was a little broken before. Now it's much more locked in and precise, which makes the wall running much easier to control, but pretty much limits it to only being good for horizontal movement. So to counteract this, I give the player double jumping, which functions pretty much the same as a double jumping in Titanfall, because I mean I already stole the wall running, so why not this too? Basically, you can jump one extra time in the air. And this actually turned out to be a lot better than I expected. It opens up a lot of new movement options, allows you to get some extra height if you want, and also just makes platforming a lot easier, which is a good thing as the game is supposed to be centered around really fast paced combat and not platforming. The cool moves are just a bonus. And speaking of cool moves, I also made a small tweak to the wall running system where the small speed boost you get from wall running only decays when you touch the ground, so you can keep your speed while wall running. However, I quickly discovered that this also lets you zoom around really quickly if you bounce off a couple walls and use a combination of bunny hopping and double jumping to maintain your speed, which is pretty fun. I then made the camera bob a bit when the player hits the ground to dampen the landing, which is a really subtle effect but looks much better than the abrupt stop it had before. I also made the player's arm move when you move the mouse, which is also a really subtle effect, but when combined with the random shaking I added from the last video, makes the player movement feel a lot more realistic. I also decided to actually give the player health, as previously he was an invulnerable freak of nature, whose only weakness was the endless void under the map. Now he's still invulnerable, but there's a health bar on the HUD because I haven't added dying yet. It was a rush job and looks like shit, but it's not a huge priority, so I'll fix it later. But speaking of the HUD, it moves now. I repurposed some of the code for shaking the camera, and now when you get hit and stuff, it does a little wiggle. Nice. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I've done in the past week or so. Admittedly, this devlog was a bit shorter than I would have liked it to be, and I didn't get quite as much done as I wanted to, but that's because I wanted to upload videos a little more frequently than once every century. And also because I decided to spend like 4 hours building this huge ass arena. But anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you want to try the current version of the game for yourself, there's a link below where you can download a small demo I set up that includes the platforming section and the arena I mentioned earlier. It's pretty cool. And of course, like and subscribe or whatever, I'm gonna go. I have bugs to fix. I mean features, features to remove, intentional features that I added intentionally that I'm gonna- <laughs>